Hello, and welcome to the Bennu Network's Remote Workforce SASE Solution Overview. Before we jump into the demo, let's level set on the Secure Access Service Edge and our unique approach to solving this challenge for carriers. If you're not familiar with Bennu Networks, I'll give you a quick background on us. Over the last decade, we've made it our mission to simplify the edge, to really make it easier for operators to deliver stunning end user experiences without jumping through hoops. Our software defined edge platform has helped operators globally to realize this network vision. The SD edge platform sits in a strategic part of carrier networks where we can virtualize network functions such as the Wi-Fi access gateway and the broadband network gateway. Today, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the SASE service gateway function. And in this example, we'll be using the tip access points. Our platform is deployed at scale globally and currently carries over seven petabytes a day, as well as connecting 24 million homes and businesses. In relation to the TIP open Wi-Fi architecture, the Bennu Network's SD SASE platform sits in the commercial applications layer. I had mentioned earlier that the way that we approach SASE is a little bit different from how you would typically see vendors approach the secure access service edge. And I'll explain a little bit more about why that's so. Traditionally, networking and security architecture has a lot of branches and a lot of teleworkers. It's an enormously complex network. Maybe you even have IPsec tunnels going in from each single endpoint location to your headquarters where you have various applications residing. You also have connectivity going to public clouds, private clouds, etc. It's most likely that you'll have to put a security appliance or something in place at every single site, which is really expensive. There's a lot of costs both upfront and ongoing in terms of running this network. Rather than taking this traditional approach, we've tried to look at it a little bit differently and taken a more SASE based architecture. SASE being the secure access service edge, which is a way to enable security from the network rather than putting an on-premise security appliance in. In our approach, we're moving traffic into more of an aggregation point at the Bennu network SASE gateway. So the traffic's coming over the broadband network and it's consolidated there. The SASE gateway is where we would apply enterprise class security policies, and it's also where we would then route the traffic, essentially using SD-WAN capabilities, either to the headquarters or to the private cloud, et cetera. There's a tremendous amount of benefits that come with this, including massive savings on hardware equipment, since you don't have to put an appliance um, in every endpoint location, massive savings on the software licensing, Usually any kind of security appliance has a fair amount of software licensing every year to keep it updated. So you're able to avoid that. It's much simpler to configure and manage. It's easier to roll out and very easy to add sites. You have elastic scalability. So if you wanna add new security capabilities, you can simply get that enabled in the network via the carrier partners. Additionally, the carrier now also has the opportunity to upsell higher levels of security services and drive more revenue, more value for the enterprise customer over time without having to really change any of the infrastructure. And of course, then you also have another set of benefits where you can use low cost compatible Wi-Fi APs and CPEs, much like the TIP AP that we'll be talking about today. There are two different approaches to SASE though, over the top and within the network. The downside of the over-the-top SASE is that you're at the mercy of the internet. In a typical over-the-top solution, traffic gets basically tunneled over to the SASE instance and goes across your broadband network in the broadband network gateway and then over to the internet. The SASE instance is very far from the edge of the network where you really wanna have security, QoS, bandwidth prioritization, analytics, et cetera. It's not very close to the actual service edge for an actual broadband user, whether it's a branch office or a home. This approach actually directly competes with carriers, so carriers aren't able to capture that revenue. Our approach is drastically different. We've actually built the only solution designed specifically for carriers. Carriers are able to have a lot of control over the access network since they provide broadband connectivity, so they have a way to integrate SASE directly into this, into this network. Now, with our solution, carriers can actually use low cost Wi-Fi APs. They don't require VPN clients. They can support all their devices. They're also really able to do security before reaching the internet. QoS is done at the edge of the network, so closest to the user. And then the traffic is optimized via SD-WAN application routing. 
then it actually has a pretty broad suite of features that come with this solution. And they range from offering more home-oriented capabilities like parental controls, uh, all the way to more advanced security functionalities like firewall, DDoS protection, malware and phishing protection, etc. We also have third-party integrations for capabilities like SSL proxy, sandboxing, IDS, antivirus, and more. The SASE solution that we'll walk through today has a variety of different multi-layer management types. This is really to make it as easy as possible for operators not only to manage their network, but to upsell or to sell this solution to their enterprise clients. So enterprise clients also have another view to be able to control um, the network from their point of view. So today we'll be walking through the remote workforce SASE solution. We'll go through each one of these tiers. So we'll first start from a super admin view. So the view of an operator, and then we'll go into one of the different enterprise accounts, look through the functionality there, and then we'll go into a user group to see what kind of information you're able to pull, whether that's analytics, network reports, et cetera. So without further ado, let's jump into the demo. I will be going through uh, our teleworker solution. Uh, as a part of managing um, the remote sites, we have a bunch of management portals. So I'll walk through each of these portals and all the functionalities that uh, uh, each, each one uh, has. So the first one we are going to look at is a super admin portal. The um, uh, Any service provider, for example, in this case, it is Comcast, he will have his, its own login uh, where it will summarize um, all the different networks that are configured, how many devices are there across all their customer environments and the number of accounts that are present. We also uh, uh, allow the, the service providers to see the bandwidth usage, the entire system level bandwidth usage, the, the device attach rate, the top website categories and the websites as well. Um, this is the service provider view. And hence we have, uh, in this case, we have three different uh, customer admin accounts. Uh, one is Comcast Enterprise, one is Comcast SMB, and then there is a partner's uh, account, uh, which belongs to Insight Corporation, right? So any number of uh, service providers, each of them will have its own account, and then they will be able to manage their own customers or their own partners within. So uh, in this view, I will go, I'll take an example of Comcast Enterprise, and I will show you how Comcast would go and program its MSP providers. I will use the functionality of auto login. So this is um, the MSP admin. Um, and um, again, we summarize how many networks are there as part of the uh, MSP, how many devices are connected throughout their uh, enterprise network and the number of accounts they have currently. Um, so in this case, we have two different enterprise accounts. Uh, one is Walgreens as well as one, the other one is Bain and Company. So these two are the enterprise accounts. Um, uh, the administrators or the IT admins uh, are going to be the ones that will log into the enterprise account and manage their remote workers or the entire site. But as a, as a MSP service provider uh, within the Comcast, they are going to create an account for each of their enterprise and associate some of the um, profiles against it. So I will quickly go through what uh, each profile is. So uh, we have um, we have uh, divided most of the functionality into, into a, a very flexible hierarchy. Uh, one is the network profiles. Uh, network profiles uh, stand for uh, the, the, all the LAN parameters, any local LAN settings that uh, we may need to program so that the devices within the network will, will um, take all these settings into it. So uh, I'll, I'll take an example of uh, a create network. So when you are about to create a network, you have to give a DHCP scope, uh, a specific VLAN associated to this particular profile and DNS entries. We also have the ability to enable guest network or uh, IPv6 configuration and um, the ability to select what is the block size for CGNet configuration. And when you create a profile, uh, it will show up in the network profiles. Um, the second set of configuration parameter is service profiles. 
So this is where you define um, what kind of uh, packages or licensing that uh, an enterprise has subscribed to. Uh, in this case, there is a license for teleworker uh, with uh, functionalities uh, that can be enabled, uh, such as the high quarter, uh, the headquarter VPN. Or you can also go into the business site SD SaaS solution and um, have uh, individual functionalities enabled, whether they want an SD, uh, the guest network, whether they want a private network, in case they want an enhanced guest network with a, a lot of different reporting functionalities. Um, you know, if, if they wish to subscribe to um, the, the VPN functionality to the headquarters, the van backup and the static IP. So these are some of the licensing features. Um, when we create a service profile, we, what we also do is tie it to a cloud security profile. Uh, let's go to the cloud security profile. This is where um, an MSP is going to Just as an example, this is where the MSP is um, uh, going to uh, select which categories do they want uh, to be blocked in, in case like let's say they want uh, the traffic to be blocked for abortion and uh, um, let's say abuse drugs or any kind of an adult traffic. What we do is we categorize all these different things into uh, three different security levels. One is restricted, one is medium, and one is low. So if you would like, uh, to configure uh, any of these uh, categories into its respective level. All you have to do is just click on which level does it each individual six um, categories go into. So we have about 100 such categories that can be categorized into security levels and you can save the profile. Uh, we also allow the MSP to set uh, specific sites that it wants the user to uh, be allowed and he can set sites like these. Uh, he can also go and block specific sites. For example, let's say if he wants to block BitTorrent or any kind of adult sites, uh, this, uh, the combination of the categories, allowed sites and block sites, um, compiles a, a cloud security category, right? So each profile is created with a combination of these three information. And when you go to the profiles, you will see all the different categories that are created. So this is the uh, day zero configuration or something that uh, a, a service, uh, an MSP has to configure just once. And after configuring all of these, he goes and creates a bunch of accounts. And within the account, uh, you can see there is an email address. It tells you the type of account, which is enterprise in this case. Um, and then we have user groups. So uh, we define user groups as a bunch of employee groups that need to be managed separately. For example, within Walgreens, they have um, they have a group that needs to be managed separately. For example, remote healthcare, they have a, a bunch of employees within the remote healthcare that needs separate set of network profiles or a different set of bandwidths, the max number of sites or how many devices per site, and they may want to manage the the engineering group differently, as you know, it may have different sets of uh, requirements you know the the network might be completely different they may have they may need access to different kind of cloud services or any kind of servers within their network so uh, each employee user group that needs to be managed separately um, is is termed under one specific user group category so we have to create a user group and this is where uh, we map the network profile the service profile and the cloud prof uh, cloud security profile together so uh, let's say if I were to create a user group, I am, let's say, um, just as an example, um, I will select what is my service profile. The service profile is tied to the bandwidth that will be assigned to this particular uh, set of employee groups. And it will come with its own set of licensing that were enabled, whether they have private network, guest network enabled. Uh, the network profile is, is, is a bunch of LAN parameters that need to be mapped. So this will have the DHCP scope, the CGNAT configuration, DNS configuration, and, and the other things. And if you want the MSP to uh, limit the max number of sites per uh, user group, they have the ability to do it. And similarly, the same thing for uh, max devices. They have the ability to set a maximum limit to the number of devices. 
that. Um, they also, in case uh, uh, the MSP ships uh, access point, uh, some of the access points can be managed, some of them uh, cannot be. So in this case, if, if uh, for uh, let's say this remote site employees, the MSP is shipping out a managed uh, access point, for example, tip AP in, in our case, uh, we would have the managed flag enabled and we would set the, uh, the SSID and passphrase And then uh, he would save the user group. So this particular um, Wi-Fi parameters would be then uh, pushed onto the access point. And as soon as the access point comes online, uh, it will take these settings and then um, the user would be able to connect to the access point through the remote site. Um, the next is the CPEs. Uh, a CP is actually an access point. Each access point is um, at a particular remote location. So each employee is, is going to have its own uh, CPE identifier. So uh, this is where we go and create a CPE. And while creating a CPE, um, it's very easy. We just map it to a specific user group. Let's say, for example, I have a, a CP Mac that I want to tie to an employee in the engineering group. I would just select engineering if I want to set any limits for bandwidth for his home, I can obviously go and set it and I can add the address. And that's uh, the, the process of adding a, a CP is just uh, easy. We also have the ability to do a bulk create for all the CPEs. So in this case, I can demonstrate the ability to add about 500 CPEs. I have, um, I have a CSV file uh, that I have created beforehand, which uh, has a list of 500 CPEs across different user groups. So what I'm trying to do is go and import those sites and they will automatically be mapped to the user groups. So I can show an example of a bulk create. So at this point, uh, most of the service providers do have uh, the information of their accounts and the CPEs. So they just have to uh, put it in a, a CSV file and we have uh, an ability to quickly go and import that file and automatically create a bunch of uh, access points. For example, you will see we had just one single page before we did a bulk create and now there are 51 pages of uh, CP information. And it is very, very easy to go and search. For example, uh, you know, if I want to search uh, you know, it could be a MAC address, it could be based on the site name, it could be based on the user group. Uh, um, in case of tip AP, I had configured a tip AP, so I can actually go into the tip AP and just see. It is very easy, even though we have like 31 different pages, all you have to do is just type in the string that you want to um, uh, query, and then you will see the list and you can go in further. So that would be the functionality of bulk create. Um, we have, this is an example of the tip AP uh, and uh, we have these details, the location details, we have the, the CP identifier for this particular tip AP. Uh, we can go into different tabs and this is where we get a bunch of information related to the AP. One of them is uh, just the general information, the IP address, the model number, what is the serial number. We also have the ability to collect statistics from the managed APs. So we collect the CPU utilization, the temperature, uh, as well as the memory. Um, we collect some radio information, as well as uh, information about the firmware and the versions that are loaded. Uh, we also do have the ability to go and upgrade uh, a specific access point uh, remotely from this site. And uh, that's how this, is, this would be the UI to do it. Now, uh, going back to the accounts, um, we have, uh, as an MSP admin, I have uh, gone and created an account, uh, associated the employee user groups to it, and uh, added the CP, the, the remote employee access points within each user group and configured. So at this point, the, the role of MSP is complete. And um, you know, I will show you the view for uh, an IT admin of a specific enterprise. So. Uh, for demonstration's sake, I will take Walgreens as an example. Let me log into Walgreens. 
So this is an example of uh, an IT admin uh, or uh, you know any kind of an enterprise admin dashboard. Uh, since we took uh, an example of Walgreens, um, um, it also allows you to go and select uh, the kind of theme or the theme colors you want. In this case, Walgreens has two different colors. One is the primary color, which is red, and the other one is this the color, the secondary color. So uh, the MSP admin can actually go and customize the theme for each MSP. Uh, if you look at the dashboard, there are there is a bunch of information that's available for this specific enterprise account. Uh, we have a list of all the CPs that are currently online, how many of them are offline at this point. Uh, we show the same information about the devices as well, online devices, as well as how many of them that were connected today. And uh, very critical information about all the threats that, um, um, uh, that were blocked uh, today, as well as sometime this week. So we give a, a big uh, information. Uh, with regards to threats so that um, the IT admin can quickly go and check how many threats uh, were blocked. And if he needs to go and change the policy or he, if he needs to police uh, any employee home, he can obviously go in dig deep and uh, apply those policies. Also, we summarize the, uh, the enterprise level charts. We have the bandwidth usage. Uh, we have the device attached usage. Uh, we can go back and uh, select whether you want the day charts, you want the weekly charts or the monthly charts or yearly charts, it is very flexible to give you all the information. Uh, again, we have a bunch of um, charts showing the websites as well as the, the website categories um, and um, a, a chart to plot the trend of uh, all the, the malware and phishing sites that were blocked. Um, also, we, we do list um, all the uh, CPs that were off online uh, and that went offline and also how long it were it was seen online. So uh, in case uh, the IT admin or the enterprise admin wants to track which uh, employee home is um, online versus how many of them are not connected at this point, he can quickly get uh, an idea from this. The next set of view is for user groups. So each user group will have its own set of views. Uh, we, as soon as you click on one of these, it will take you uh, uh, to uh, a page where you can apply different kinds of settings. So I'll take uh, remote healthcare as an example. So you can see all the employees within the remote healthcare uh, can be configured or can be policed from this page. Um, these are analytics. We have analytics at the enterprise level, at a user group level, as well as at the CP level or, or at the remote home. So this particular analytics page is actually going to show you uh, all the information that's happening at this point within the remote healthcare group. Um, again, it gives you the flexibility to select any kind of interval. Um, we also show the top device usage within this particular user group in case the IT admin would like to know uh, what is the usage uh, or which particular device is, is uh, trying to um, use bandwidth uh, as compared to any other ones. And we also have the ability to download the report as well. Uh, and this report will have all this information summarized and also the list of all the threats that were blocked. Uh, going to the networks section, um, as an IT admin, you have the ability to either uh, pause the internet or you can also schedule the access in case you want to schedule the access for a particular time. Let's say, um, you know, let's say the, the office time is between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can always go into schedule and set uh, the time where you want um, the employee home to have access to all the resources within the office or in the cloud or anything that you set from here. Right? That is one option. Um, you can also, as an IT admin, go in and configure different LAN settings. If you want to change the DHCP scope, if you want to set a limit on max number of devices, if you want to limit the bandwidth within the house in case you see a, a lot of usage from some of the devices, you have the ability to do so. Um, uh, previously, while looking at the licenses, I uh, had mentioned um, one of the licenses we have is for the ability to create an IPsec tunnel uh, to the headquarters in case you want all the traffic encrypted from a specific home going into the office network or to the cloud. 
So uh, this would be the section where you go and configure a bunch of parameters, the gateway for the IPsec, and all the home traffic will be encrypted within the, the secure tunnel and um, sent out to the headquarters or the cloud services. There is another tab where we go and set all the different security level policies. Uh, we had seen in the uh, admin portal, MSP admin portal, where we mapped some of the categories into uh, different security levels, restricted, medium, and low. So we do have the ability to apply uh, different security levels to change the security level. If you want a specific home to have access to uh, 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 more sites, uh, more than normal, uh, let's say for the test, let's say their engineering group or the testing group needs access to something else that would usually be restricted. Uh, I can go as an IT admin, I can set the security level to be medium or even low where uh, a few more uh, categories are actually allowed in there. And um, I can also go and modify or you know add the sites that I need to be allowed or blocked for this particular um, user group. Uh, we have the ability to um, apply onboarding policies. Uh, so it's just one policy for all the devices within a particular group. You can allow all the devices or block all the devices together. And uh, the devices that you choose to block um, would show up in the quarantine device section. So the, the, all the devices that are blocked uh, from joining the network would show up as quarantine devices. For all these, uh, if you need notifications, we have the ability to send an email or send a text. For example, uh, you can always enable the notifications and for each activity, whether it's uh, blocking of illegal devices uh, from getting onto the network, or uh, if you want notification that a specific device is trying to access websites that are not allowed, uh, you can get a notification for the same as well. Um, Going into the CP view, if you want a little bit of detailed view uh, into each home, uh, you can. Uh, these are the set of CP. So each CP is actually tied to one employee home. I can click on each employee home and uh, I can uh, get a detailed view of all the devices. Or so, for example, it shows me the uptime is four hours. Uh, um, you know, I have currently one device online in this particular user group. What is the usage coming in from this particular remote workplace? Um, as an IT admin, I have the ability to allow or block internet access, or if there is an issue and if I want to debug and let's say reset the network to, to refresh it, I have the ability to reset as well. And then, um, on the top, it shows the status of the CPs. Uh, if you want to rename um, the CP, you can obviously go and do it here. If you want to, in case the, there is a change in the address, you can quickly go and change uh, the address as well for the employee home. Um, there is information related to the devices as well. Um, how many devices are online? What is the, the bandwidth limit in case it was set for a particular device? Uh, if the device is identified, uh, we would show the icon and a lot more details about that particular device, especially the, the IP address or IPv6 address assigned, what is the bandwidth utilization uh, in case it is actively trying to browse or any kind of fingerprinting information to identify the client. And um, the IT admin also has the ability to either play or pause the internet or set any kind of limits from here. And um, as soon as you select the device, uh, the usage for that particular device will show up here. So this view will be refreshed based on the device that you select. So if I select another device, let's say this is not trying to browse, uh, you know, there, there, there is no bandwidth here and we have not identified it. But uh, for example, this one, it was uh, browsing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and uh, you don't see any data today, but there is some information regarding it when it was previously connected. Uh, this is the, the home level view. Um, we have the ability to generate reports or uh, whether it's uh, 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 whether you want it based on the user group or uh, you know you want it for all the user groups or a specific one. For example, if you want the healthcare, if you want to select based on the CP Mac or if you want it based on the, the device Mac, you have the ability to do so. And it will show you all the different devices that are showing you data. 
or it also gives you the ability to see um, um, the charts based on let's say things that are uh, blocked in case there is some malware phishing or any other category that that is being um, um, or the websites that belong to this category are being uh, browsed, then you will see a nice little report. And then if you download it, you will get these charts as well as all the charts for that specific selection uh, for the IT admin to go and consume uh, if it, he has to take any action based on the data available. So uh, this um, shows all the functionalities uh, that are part of the Teleworker portal. Uh, when it comes to managing Wi Fi, uh, you can. Uh, if any access point is actually um, um, manageable from remote, uh, we have the ability to go into the networks and also change the Wi-Fi username password uh, as an IT admin if I want to do that, if I want a different uh, security level to be applied to any of these um, uh, access points that can be managed remotely, I can always choose to do so. Thanks for tuning in. The SASE solution we went over today is actually already currently deployed. If you want to learn more about this, check out the webinar at the URL.